in Balaclava. Leg warmers, arm warmers, gloves. What do we look like? They can spot us a mile off, can't they? So here we go, on the road in Spain. Today's destination, Denia. We're starting off in Alicante and it's a Saturday morning. So there's lots of other cyclists out and they're all staring at us because we're wearing shorts and jersey in what is their winter. Bikes all seem to be working perfectly, suspiciously well. This is a perfect morning so far. Have a little bit of rain, wouldn't it? No, just a little shower. That's why we came here, freshen us up. So it's inevitable there's going to be a million questions about what bike I'm riding. So I thought on day one we would just get through it, I'd talk about the setup, and let you know exactly what I brought with me and what I'm riding. So here it is. So this is my Villia Rave, first time taking it bike packing. Villia sell this as a gravel slash all road bike. So it's actually pretty good for bike packing because it has one disc brakes, very, very strong, full GRX group set. And the gearing is kind of gravel friendly, which again is good for bike packing because you're carrying lots of luggage. I've gone with a road setup because we didn't want to make the same mistake as last time we went bike packing Jimmy and ended up on off road bikes just on the road. Have you got a multi tools? I've got multiple, yeah. Is it like very easily accessible. Yes. Very easily accessible. In my bar bag, which also has the rest of my tools, Garmin Varia lights, just in case we get caught in the dark, and a bunch of inner tubes with repair kit. One of my bros. You know there's like star one, like not a, not a hex Talks. thingy, a talk thingy. Have you got one in there? Hmm, maybe. I would think, why, why, why on earth would SRAM decide to use torque screws on the the brake calipers. For navigation, I'm using a Garmin Edge 830, completely stock, not with the extra battery pack, it's long enough to last these kind of length rides. Then have two stem bags, or what I'm using them for as food pouches, which are both full of sweets. It's a very convenient place to uh, put your food because you always have it accessible right in front of you and don't have to unzip anything. You end up eating more, thus having a better time on your ride. Pro logo, fairly short nose saddle. It's okay, it's quite wide there, so I feel it kind of touching my legs. Might switch over to my tried and tested Cell Italia when I get back. Single best bit of bike packing equipment that I've got with me, and Jimmy does as well, the tail fin rack. I have the aero pack version, so it's got this trunk on the top and panniers on the side. This one's 20 something liters, this one's 22 liters. And on the other side, I have a smaller 10 liter one. The two bags on the sides, both fasten on in the same way to the carbon struts, which are attached to the bottom of the seat post and to a special skewer which goes through the wheel, which should fit any bike. I've heard it'll fit any bike. Really? Hmm. It'll fit any bike. Inside this 22 litre pack, I fitted my 15 inch laptop. Fairly niche use because uh, I've got to make these videos along with all my laptop chargers, drone, all the chargers for that, memory cards, extra spare cameras if things go wrong. And I can put this big camera in there if I don't want to carry it on my back. In the smaller pannier on the other side, I've got all my normal human clothes for when I'm not cycling. Inside the aero pack, is my down jacket. I always take a down jacket even if I'm going to hot countries. Normal human shoes for walking around after riding. Human shoes. Human shoes. Oh, these cyclist shoes. Non-human shoes. Yeah. <laughs> and cycling kit. And that's pretty much it. I've also got these ski straps wrapped round, ready for when I need to carry things like a bottle of Aquari Aquarius. Got electrolytes in it. Well nice. Tire choice, Hutchinson Fusion 5s, tubeless, 30 millimeter on these big fat park horse wheels. Bottles are magnetic, Fidlock. I think these are the 600 mil ones. And then I have another bottle on the back, which is empty currently. Maybe when we do a bigger day, I'll use this as a backup. A little bit smaller, but it clips on the back of the tail fin real neat. SPD versions of the Garmin Rally power pedals. Really handy to pace myself, especially when you're on a bike like this, which is fairly slow because it's really heavy and you're used to going a bit faster, so you end up pushing on a bit too much sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's very easy, especially early on, because you know it's, it's it's essentially six days of riding. It's so easy to early on be like, well, I'm absolutely fine. Because you're just, fresh. Just having a thing to power heart rate, whatever whatever that is, to just kind of go like, keep yourself in check, keep yourself in check, keep yourself keep yourself in check. I personally think is really important. Last thing, which I'm very happy with, is my tiny little frame pump you're thing. Not there, are you? Well, I'm not happy about it anymore, Jimmy, because you won up to me. You won up to me. You I've won, won the, the frame pump Olympics, haven't I? Go on, show us your frame pump. I'm very proud of this. It is cool. I've always wanted one of these. 
and I thought I've got such a wonderful bike I should put a wonderful pump on it and I, I actually said to Emily I really want one of those pumps I'm not going to buy it because they're too expensive and I managed to find this half price so I said Emily I've bought a really expensive pump <laughs> this is a 180 pound Silka frame pump which is awesome if you're going to be doing winter riding and bike packing. What I would say as someone which has used um, a couple of pumps, frame pumps, the top peak one is as good as this but significantly cheaper. Frame pumps are amazing because you can actually get good pressure out of them and it's a lot quicker and if you know particularly in winter, winter's a great shout for it because you can actually get your tyres inflated quickly and get back on the road before you freeze to death. Um, this is obviously fantastic quality, it genuinely is but the top peak one is, it works as good as this does. Ta-da! It looks cooler than no pump. It's so excessive. The infrastructure puts Britain in shape. Oh, it's insane. This cycle lane runs from Benidorm to Altea, and then we're going to go on to Calpe, and then eventually Denia. These roads bring me back lots of nice memories. I feel quite nostalgic. This is the route you do out into the mountains and then back into Benidorm bonk, get loads of food at a supermarket and sit on the floor and eat it. Lawrence would buy a whole tub of swirly Nutella stuff, Ooh. a whole baguette and eat all of that and then have bread legs all the way home. Basically we were living the dream. It'll be us in about five minutes so and we've only done about 20k. Huge audience, eh? What's going on? <laughs> that was good. I'll leave you for two minutes. It's the bike, it, it, it draws people in. Like when we were eating, there was literally people walking past going like, what is that? Lovely bunch of guys on holiday checking out the bikes. We have had a tango bar because you haven't been to Calpe. If you haven't been for a tango bar, we're now, we're now heading up the coast even further to famous Mount Vanessa. I quite like I've completed Calpe in about 20 minutes. Yeah, this is it. It's now just repeat. Ride bikes, tango bar. Repeat. Repeat. Day after day. See you there tomorrow. Oh no, we won't, will we? So this is famous Mount Benissa. Infamous. Well, there's nothing famous about it. It's not a mountain and it's not even called Benissa. Benissa is the town down the road. Basically, we've been coming to Calpe, well I have, for the last 10 years, maybe longer. It's where we uh, used to do our training camps when we come and uh, when we were racing back in the day. And who's we? Well, me and Lawrence, Henry Latimer. You never met him, you love him. Yeah, end up. We go, we go way back. <laughs> We'd always call this famous Mount Bonissa. Anyway, we're back on it now. Feeling very nostalgic, feeling very sweaty. I'm not feeling nostalgic at all. First time you've been on it. For me and Hendubs go way back. Why didn't you ever go on holiday with him to Calpe? Oh, we went on other holidays. Right. We're not allowed to talk about them. Me and Hendubs. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more like 50 million. Absolutely outrageous. What are you doing? Stretching my neck, you know. It's normal, isn't it? Normal behaviour, but your curve. You can't see the curve, you're looking the wrong way. Because I haven't stretched my neck. You've already stretched it. Ah. Unfortunately, I woke up courtesy of the worst pillows in history with a right crink in my neck and it's not getting better. But I will seek advice from a medical professional and continue on with great earnest and might. Is the medical professional the YouTube comment section? No, it's Emily's mother. Oh, oh. <laughs> the actual medical professional. Oh, yeah. Usually I just talk to these guys. Hey guys, what should I do? I've got a real yeah. problem with my leg. Like. Yeah, fucking tennis ball. Take Francis.